Welcome back everybody to my last section on um, this wet hair colored pencil drawing. I am adding the water right now that's coming off of the rabbit. I went ahead and got started um, because you don't need to see me make a ton of little dots, but I will show you exactly how I'm doing this. What I did first is I took an extra piece of this very same board that I'm drawing on <clears throat> which is like a, a Strathmore mixed media. And I just started playing around with how I might want these water droplets to look by looking at the reference photo. On the reference photo, they kind of look white and blue, but I'm limiting my colors on this. You know, I've, I've already decided I'm only gonna use three colors. I'm gonna use Caput Born and Violet, I'm gonna use black, and I'm gonna use white. So I can get um, a transparent look using just my regular white Caran d'Ache and um, and then I'm also using a gel pen which is a jelly roll Sakura jelly roll pen and it's um, it's not necessarily archival it can if you get it if you get it too gloppy it can dry and after a while flake off, but I'm not too worried about it because I'm not putting it on real heavy. I'm just using it to highlight the already white whites. So what I've done is I've looked kind of at how the splatters are formed and what I'm going to do, I want you to see really close. Right now, so far, I've only put the white down on my bunny page, but I'm gonna actually use, to kind of define the white, that's just a tiny, 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 faintest line of the Caput Mortem, which will give it a little bit more dimension and make it pop from the back of the page. But see, I would played around with some drops and I kind of like what happened with this drop. And I didn't just come up with this out of my imagination. I did what every other artist can do right now. And that is, I went to the computer and I have an account with Shutterstock. I just found water droplets. I looked up water droplets on table and looked through and found some that were really, actually I'm very pleased because they're kind of similar to the coloring that I'm using. And I see, and I'm observing how these watercolors lay on the table and where the shadows are and how they add extra white in this front area. And it just makes them look more transparent, more watery, more droppy. So that's what I did. I did a sample on here just to make sure I thought I could get that to work. And there it is. It's not, it's not great, but I'm like, yes, this is going to work. So um, that's what I'm going to do here at the bottom of Mr. Bunny. I very, very lightly sketched in some bigger water drops that have just landed on the table beside him. And I'm going to, we'll walk through and do those. But as for all these others, I'll just, um, I've already started kind of um, filling in all these other tiny little drops. I lightly sketched some of them and then I'm adding more in as I go. You can still see a little bit of the graphite pencil that I use to say, okay, I want one here, I want one here, I want one here, but I'm not too worried about that because I am going to come back in with my to put more to, I'm going to put this down so I don't get too many oils on there from my skin. And I'm just going to, um, I'll put a little tiny, tiny dash of the to put more to violet on either side of those little drops. Maybe even just on one side of the drops. Just play around with it a little bit. But I want them, that's going to help them stand out from the background a little bit. And these drops are different sizes. So they're not all one size. Some of them are more transparent than others. Some of them just look like a bit of a dash. Some of them have a little bit more substance to them. So make them random. Out here, there's just, you know, some tiny bits. We can just hint at those drops behind him in the distance. Have a couple that even go way out here. That's okay. And 
there is a lot right up close to his hand and body right here. So we're just going to use different pressures so we get different darknesses of the water. Not as many on this other side. <clears throat> I'm guessing it's just because of the way he was shaking when the picture was taken. Which I am totally in awe of photographers and how they can just capture such awesome moments. They have to be patient. But man, they can get some really, really good stuff. And we get to be the wonderful recipients of their patience. <laughs> How fun. Just little random water drops. Just using my white. Karen Dash. And I'm going to do one. I like this one. This little whip of a, a water drop here in the reference photo. So I'm going to try to recreate that. I have to go over my color. Let's see if it's going to let me do that. It goes from very thin to thicker fatter and whiter and then I'll go back over that then to make it a little darker <clears throat> I will go over that with the jelly roll pen the gel pen yeah that's gonna work um, okay so now let's look at let's keep my reference here let's look at these um, puddles at his feet. I'll try to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So they're mostly, I can color in using a circular motion, color in that white. Not pressing real hard. And I got two drawn in over here. Might have to give my Karen Dash White a sharpen here in a minute. Okay, and then what's going to make these look 3D is how I add some shadow in the Kaput Mortem and how I add more white. So looking, looking here and what they're doing here and how they treat, there's the color here, it's a little darker on this side. A little thicker and then right up here at the edge huh, an eyelash right up here at the edge is a very light 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 layer of the kaput mortem with a slightly lighter 
outline and then it gets wider up front and that's what's giving us our dimension. So I'm going to think of this water drop as sitting on top of a table and how it kind of bubbles up. And a bit lighter there, not as heavy there. There's a little bit lighter in the behind. Just ever so lightly. I could probably even erase here a little bit to let some of that tan color from the paper come through. That would be another way to do it. Very, very light part right there to give it some dimension. A little bit darker right here. Right hand, the name of the game. <clears throat> I think I am going to grab the kneaded eraser and just lighten up the back of that a little bit. If I can get a point on my kneaded eraser, try to get a little point in there. Pull up some color. back bubble, a little bit fainter, this guy darker in the front. darkening up that white in the front by adding another layer of the Caran Dash Luminance. That's giving me a little bit more dimension there. It's a little too dark right there. That front, so I'm just going to dab it with a kneaded eraser. Pick up some of that color. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to this one. Add a little bit of dark in the front. 
my pencil that I'm using for these shadows, this Kaput Mortem Violet, is very sharp. I need that fine point. giving this some height here in the front. I'm giving the bubble a little bit of height to show that it's bubbling up. <clears throat> so that's why the shadow is coming up a little bit further. It was a little sloppy on this end. I'm gonna fix that. There we go. I'm shadowing it in the back, show that it's further back. Okay, darker on the very bottom, lighter just above that to give it height. Hopefully you can see this, not quite. Let me move that, there we go, now you can see. Light, light in the back, all around, and then just lightly. I mean, I am barely touching the surface of this with my pencil. And there we go. There we have some dimension in that water droplet. Cool. Go back over the front parts of the white with my luminance. My Karen Dash white luminance. A little more defined there. Look at those water drops. How fun is that? It just look like they're popping off the page. Okay, I like that. Now for the rest of these, to make them pop a little more, I'm gonna do what I said I would do. I'm just, at, on um, a few of the bigger ones, I'm just gonna take my Kaput Mortem Violet. Hopefully you can see this, I think you can. And I'm just gonna very lightly go on one side and the other. Just, I mean, this is really light, you guys. just enough to give it a touch of definition. On some of them, I'm gonna go on one side. On some of them, I go on both, like with a little point. Can you see what I'm doing there? Making it random, because water looks random when it's flopping off a wet bunny. Just a hint of shadow all we're doing. Can you see how that helps it to pop off the page a little bit? I'm going to sharpen my Karen Dash White Luminance. So I'm going to add a few more tiny little that would happen. It's still sharp enough. Okay. Add a little bit more shadow here and there. And I'm going to go over to this side. I really need to get that up more so you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. 
that's better. Okay. <clears throat> and then over here, once again, just a little shadow, sometimes on one side, sometimes on both. You can still see a faint hint of some of the graphite I used, but that's okay. I'm not gonna stress about that. It's so faint, you really can't tell it apart as much from the kaput mortem. So the bigger ones, putting a little bit of a shadow. Very faintly. it out a little bit. Some of these look a little too dark to me, so what I was trying to do here is grab my colorless blender and tone down some of the darker marks a little bit just by going over them with the colorless blender and that usually tones things down. Still looks too much. I'm gonna take my kneaded eraser and just pat it here and there to kind of tone it down a little bit. Yeah, that's helping a lot actually. kind of feeling it. I'm like, ah, it needs to be a drop here. But we don't want to make it look too predictable. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gel pen. I've had these, gosh, for over a year now. And they... You really have to shake them to kind of get them to flow, and then I'll, I'll take and try to get the ink to flow by putting it on my finger to get it to actually start coming out, because it does not want to come out. And I'm just coming in a little bit darker on this little loop of water that I created off of his paw. See, it started, it stopped flowing again, so I gotta shake it and get it flowing again. There we go, now it's really working. That looks really bright. I might tone that down with my finger. There we go. And then I can also come back in on some of these really big bright ones that have the shadows, and I can put a really, really bright one next to the shadow. Got to be careful, this will be wet, so I don't want to go up against that really wet gel ink. <clears throat> there, you see how that just pops some of them around? And then I can actually there. I put them in there, but then I dab it with my finger, and that's what 
softens, softens it down. bit more brightness up here. Some of these are looking too much the same. There we go. All right. And down here, the very, very front. Gonna go over it with the gel pen as a little touch of a highlight just at the very front of that drop. It gives it even more dimension. Isn't that cool how that works? Even take the gel pen and lightly hit parts of these whiskers. anything else <clears throat> I did come back in here after the last uh, part that I recorded and I shortened some of the fur here because it just looked too long as a sweepy part of the fur so I came in with some shadow like right here right here and here and just that shortened that length of the fur so it made more sense to me Now, the only other thing, there is quite a bit of water right here. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do just gel pen on there. I think that's probably what's going to show up the best. I'm going to try it. I can always wipe it off really quickly if I don't like it. dabbing is what I'm doing with my finger so I'm not smearing it as much but that way it's not in your face white like uh oh what happened there it definitely does look like a water drop Just trying to decide how much I want to put in here. It's almost looking a little too uniform. I'll try some little dabbies. That looks better. That's kind of fun. just white tiny drops
thought he'd try a water drop between his toes, but I didn't like it. So the cool thing is you can just go right over it with your pencil that you had before. Covers it right up. Okay, I think we're really close to being done. <clears throat> I think the last thing I'm going to do is take my black and go over. First of all, I'm going to make sure very carefully. I do want to go over his eyes one more time with this black and just really darken that. Go over the blackest places on his mouth. Do this eye. See what a difference that makes? That was just a little too black and heavy right there. So I took my colorless blender and I blended it down and smoothed it out a little bit. Okay. This could be a little blacker in here. bit more black on his chin. And that bottom, cute little bottom lip. All right. we're about done. I might go back in and darken up some of those white white marks. I don't know. We'll see. I might go back in with my kneaded eraser. I'm just trying to see if I like the way that water is flying off of him. Do I need to add a few more, you know, sideways maybe? Well, there we go. The only thing I might do is go back in and get rid of some of these darker marks. I liked them at first. I don't know. I might have to live with it for a minute and just see if I like it or not that way. And if not, I can go back in with my electric eraser, lighten them up a little bit. <clears throat> but all in all, I think he's done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did. He's so fun. Thank you, Sue Cross, for your wonderful photo and inspiration. A little bit more white highlight on the top of that bunny, that bunny ear. If you guys like this, let me know if you like more things like this. Um, I really appreciate you watching. Hope you learned something. See you soon.